Hi everyone! In this video, I will show you how to implement a custom authorization attribute in ASP.NET Core and how to use dependencies while creating those custom attributes. Also, you will see how to use the policy based authorization as a recommended way to implement the custom authorization logic. ASP.NET Core provides filters to execute user defined code before or after an action method. One of those filters that helps in authorizing the request before the action method invokes uses the I authorization filter interface. This interface exposes a single on authorization method that executes every time before an action method is invoked. So, to create a custom authorization attribute, let's first create a new class and name it session requirement attribute. Since I want to use this class as an attribute, I need to add the attribute class as a base class. And also, this class must inherit from the I authorization filter interface since I want to use it for the custom authorization. Now, let's simply implement the interface. I will not implement the on authorization method because at this point, I simply want to show you how to create a custom authorization attribute. I'll get back to this pretty soon. So, to use this attribute, I can simply open the controller and call the session requirement attribute on top of the action. Now, the action method doesn't execute unless the authorization is successful within the on authorization method. This is good approach, but sometimes we need to inject external dependencies within the filter to perform authorization logic. So, to show what I mean, let's create a new private read only session validation service field named session validation service and use Visual Studio to help us generate a constructor to initialize this field. The drawback of this approach is that we cannot inject external dependencies into the filter. This is because attributes must have their constructor parameters supplied when we use them. This is where we can make use of the type filter attribute. So, by combining both I authorization filter and type filter attribute, we can create a custom authorized attribute that supports injecting external dependencies. Let's see this in practice. I will implement a simple custom authorized attribute that verifies the HTTP request contains a custom session header. So, for that, let's start by creating a new class and name it session requirement filter. This class must inherit from the I authorization filter interface. And let's just implement it. Now, as I did for the previous class, I will create a new read only field of the session validation service type and name it session validation service. And of course, implement a constructor to initialize this field. You can see this custom session validation service, so let's implement the validation logic inside it first. Here, I will create a single method that returns a bool named contains custom header with two parameters authorization filter context named context and the string header name. Now, I will simply return true or false if the request contains the provided header by calling the context .http context and then request and headers, where I will provide the header name and simply check if there are any headers with the provided name. That's all. I can now return to the filter class and implement the on authorization method. So, let's check if our request doesn't contain the header name by using the injected service and the contains custom header method and provide the context and the name of the header. If it doesn't, I will use context.result to set the response to unauthorized object result with unauthorized request message and simply exit the method. That's all. Next, I can come back to my attribute, remove everything inside the class and inherit from the type filter attribute. Also, I need a constructor and I have to provide the call to the base constructor where I will pass a type of my session requirement filter as an argument. 
As you can see, inheriting from type filter attribute allows us to pass the session requirement filter class that executes when we use this attribute. Finally, we can check our controller to verify there are no errors there. With this done, let's run the app to test this. First, I will send the request without the accession ID header. And we can see an unauthorized 401 response. On the other hand, if I add the session header and send the request again, we get the response with an OK 200 HTTP status code. Excellent. Now, let's talk about policy based authorization. Policy based authorization decouples authorization and application logic and provides a flexible, reusable, and extensible security model in ASP.NET Core. We need to know three concepts to implement a policy based authorization using policies, requirements, and handlers. A policy consists of several requirements. A requirement is a class that accepts parameters to validate against the authorization logic. And lastly, an authorization handler holds the logic to validate a policy based on the requirements added to it. Now, let's put this into practice. I will implement the same authorization check I did in the previous section to verify the HTTP request for a custom session header. Firstly, let's create a requirement for the session header validation. And let's call it session requirement. Requirements must implement the empty marker interface I authorization requirement. I will also create a single string session header name property, but only a getter. And of course, create a constructor to initialize this property. Next, I need a handle class that will process the authorization logic. And let's name it session handler. To create an authorization handler, we inherit from authorization handler class with the session requirement type parameter. This ensures the invocation of the authorization handler for the requirement type session requirement. Next, let's just implement the authorization handler class. You can see the method accepts the authorization context and the requirement instance itself. Now, before any further work inside this method, I will add a new private read-only field for IHTP context accessor and name it HTTP context accessor. Also, as usual, let's initialize this field with the constructor. Now, inside the method, I want to extract the HTTP request and for that, I will use the field and call the HTTP context.request property. Now, let's check if we have the required header inside the request. To do that, I will call the HTTP request.headers dictionary and pass the requirement.session header name as key and use the any method at the end. If this check passes, I will call the context fail method to state that the validation failed and return task.completed task. In other case, I will call the context.succeeded method with the requirement as an argument and return task.completed task again. So, that's it regarding the validation logic. And now, let's register the handler and the accessor with the service collection inside the program class. So, for the accessor, I will call the add HTTP context accessor method. And for the header, I will call the add singleton method and provide the interface first and then the implementation class. Also, I need an authentication scheme provided. And for that, I will simply add a new authentication scheme. Now, we can register the policy with the authorization service. So, Let's use the builder.services property and call the add authorization method with the options provided. Here, I will use options to call the add policy method to add the policy with the provided name. And also, I need to make use of the policy builder delegate. With it, 
I can call the requirements property and use the add method to add a new session requirement with the name of the header I will pass inside the request header. Finally, let's use the policy in our controller action method. The usage is pretty straightforward as I have to use the authorize attribute and pass the name of the policy as session policy. This mandates policy fulfillment for the execution of the action method. Let's now test the code. First, I will send a request without passing the accession ID header. And as you can see, we get an unauthorized response. Ok, so let's add the header and send the request again. And this time we can see the result. Excellent! With all this implemented, I can simply finish the video. Please let me know how you liked the video and do you have any recommendations you would add. Of course, you can do that by dropping a comment in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again in the next one. Until then, all the best!